In this video, I interview Ron Bullis, the CEO of LifeWorks Advisors, and he shares how to future-proof our advisory business and achieve success. If we're planning on being an advisor for the next five years and beyond, then this is gonna be an important one for us to really future-proof that business. So no matter what happens with the industry, how the industry changes, we can adapt and actually get out in front of it and be ready for it. So if you're gonna retire in the next five years, then you can probably skip this one because maybe it won't apply, but be sure to subscribe because there are more videos coming out with Ron in them. Uh, the next one's gonna be on how they created their lead engine that they can turn on and off and control the number of prospects that reach out to them. And then how to build enterprise value, even if you're a firm with less than 100 clients. I'll see you in the video. Question number five is a question that I heard a, a gentleman by the name of Peter Sheehan. Uh, he's a consultant, does public speaking. He, was, he spoke at a Barron's conference I was at um, 2019, 2019, 2020, something like this. And he asked the question, something like this, I'm paraphrasing, but I'm gonna give him credit for it. He said this, are you leading your clients into the future or are you just following them there? Are you leading your clients into the future or are you just following them there? Now, this is one of my favorite questions. It's one that led me to really invest in technology as part of why we you know, started building our own software platforms. It's easy as an advisor, let's say I'm gonna pick on large national firms for a second. I don't have anything against any of them, but it's easy when you're a single advisor, maybe inside of a large institution to say like, well, they don't let me do digital marketing or they don't let me talk about crypto assets or I can't do this, that right, da, 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 down the line. My question for you is this, whose obligation and to whom are you obligated? Meaning, if you truly are somebody who believes that you are serving your clients and putting their interests ahead of yours, you owe it to them to ask the question, is the platform that I'm on, is the firms that I'm associated with, even, even if you own your own RIA, right? Are you positioning yourself to lead your clients into the future or are you just following them there? So as our clients now are used to being able to trade any kind of asset in milliseconds on their iPhone or their smartphone, Right, that's an example. As clients are demanding almost this like Netflixing of financial advice, right? They have a question they need it answered now because the world's moving quickly, right? Um, are you are you building those things, right? All of us probably can think of examples of advisors that we might say are stale and crusty, <laughs> right? I've heard people reference our industry sometimes as old, male, pale, and stale, and there's some truth to this right? Because we're in an industry that we actually don't bring anything to the table. Our clients bring all the money to the table and we get to make money off that. We're in an industry that when the equity markets over a 10 year period of time have the lar you know, the longest bull run in the history of the market, I can add zero additional value to my client. And it's likely that that client doesn't leave me. And yet I get a monster pay raise. I go from making X to making two or three X in 10 years, and I'm not doing anything different. So it's really easy in our space, and I'm, I can point the finger at myself too, it's really easy in our space to enjoy the benefits once we built the practice, right? And in some respects you would say, yeah. my mission is to not mess it up, right? My mandate is to not mess it up. But we owe it, I believe, to our clients and to our employees and then to ourselves as shareholders, whether it's again a cash flow business or an enterprise business, we owe it to ask this question. Am I leading my clients and my team into the future or am I just following there? And I believe that we're at this intersection of, of technology where the delivering of advice and investments, uh, investment planning, is gonna continue to make so many rapid shifts and iterations that what might have taken 10 years to be a trend kind of movement is now gonna happen in 18 months. So I think every advisor that plans to be in this space for a while needs so, to be focusing on this. So is that a, I would look at it as an opportunity. I'm looking at, okay, is it opportunity or is it a challenge? What, um, how are you seeing this as you're talking to oh, advisors? Opportunity. Um, this is the biggest opportunity. I, yeah. I love talking to new advisors. And I'm gonna say new, not necessarily because they have to be young, but 
looking at the demographic structure of the financial advising wealth management space, right? The average age of an advisor is something like 60. There's more people with a CFP over the age of 70 than there is under the age of 30, right? Um, when, I, when I look at the setup for the market, not only are we about to have, I'm about to, not only sometime in the next 10 to 15 years will we see the largest transfer of wealth in the history of civilization from the baby boomer generation to probably skipping most of the Gen Xers and going to the millennials. Like, this is coming at light speed, right? So I think the opportunity to be very thoughtful about what the future of advice, uh, that is a plug for my website, the future of advice, that yeah. I, I think that being thoughtful about what the future of financial advising and wealth management is gonna look like by asking a question like this, right? And then just saying, how do I deliver that? There's always gonna be a gap. I have a gap between the technology that I wanna have for my clients and what we have now. But investing in, closing that gap, and focusing on how to consistently do that, I believe, keeps us at least at pace with what our clients are thinking about and what they're using and what they're expecting as they're moving into the future, as opposed to just kind of getting dragged along with them. So I look at this as a massive opportunity for anybody who has a long-term view of wanting to be in this space. If you're getting out tomorrow, sell to the highest bidder. The multiples are still amazing. But if you're going to be in this space for 10 plus years, I think uh, the opportunity to, to to lead here is, I think it's absolutely amazing. It's I think it's better than when I started in 2008 as an advisor. So do you think it's having the awareness is enough moving into the future so that we don't get left behind or are there more practical things i mean the things that come to mind are just investing in tech in the future um, obviously relationships is always going to be a key right for advisors that that sort of connection and then there's also tech what should so so that i don't get left behind so that the people watching don't get left behind are anything practical or is it just being aware that we have to keep studying and keep learning and, and yeah, be aware. So I think there's, I think there, yeah, no, no, I don't know if that was a question, it, but to yeah, do your best. The question, if I'm hearing you right, are, are there concrete, tangible action steps somebody can take because you can see the practicality of the question versus this is more of just kind of this mm -hmm. strategic level questioning that you have to be aware of and keep orienting to. I think it's both here. I'll give a couple of what I would say are tactical, um, like in practical steps, okay? We learned when we launched our digital marketing in 2018 that our sales process that had a really, really high win rate when we were in person with a client didn't work doing it over a video conference. Mm. Because think about, oh, you've done this, right? Mm -hmm. You've sat and had a cup of coffee with a prospect and you've talked about the community events or people you know in common or right things like this. So how do you rapidly build trust in a world that's increasingly distrustful and you don't have the advantage of breaking bread or sharing a beverage with somebody because that is a massive trust builder for humans, right? So even something as practical as saying, is our language, how we present ourselves, like how we make people feel from their very first interaction with us, right? When I say are, are, you're leading them into the future, meaning you're, you're looking at something that's just normal, right? My sales process, but you're orienting it to say, if the norm is going to be more frequent, shorter meetings using, you know, video conferencing. Uh, I even have clients that face that, that want to FaceTime because they just want to see me while they're asking a quick question, right? Things like this. Am I building my structure to support that kind of engagement? That would be a practical one, right? Now, all of us should, be doing this well, but building a sales process that, that builds trust rapidly with prospects that you've never met before in a digital environment, um, that's a very different thing than in a traditional sit down, meet them for coffee, have them into my office, kind of show them around, you know, those kind of things. That would be one. Two, another one that I think every advisor should be doing, and maybe people listening to this already are, so if, if you're already doing this, you're ahead of the, the crowd, I believe. I just, and I just gave this, uh, I was just on a podcast for wealthmanager.com, it hasn't come out yet, but a little spoiler, they asked me like, how do you benchmark client experience? Because everybody in the industry right now is talking about client experience. Well, you have to have examples of good client experience. So every advisor who's listening to this, if you want to be part of, if you want to have the opportunity to lead your clients in the future, go open investment accounts at all the leading robo-advisors. Go open an account on Wealthfront, go open an account on Betterment. 
have a Robinhood account, get a Coinbase account, right? Educate yourself about digital assets and what this technology means. Doesn't mean you have to adopt it in your practice, right? This is the practical piece. Doesn't mean you have to constantly be saying, I, well, I have to leave the firm I'm at and go to this next firm because I don't have the technology, right? But understanding the environment that our clients are in in terms of what's available to them from a technological standpoint will help you either close gaps by saying, well, we don't have that technology, but we can do this manually, but because clients are gonna want it, right? Or it'll help you understand, man, yeah. that three minutes it took me to become a client of what well, I'm just picking on Wellfront. I don't, again, no, no financial connection to them whatsoever. I just think they do, uh, their client experience is amazing, yeah. right? Uh, the three minutes that it took me to become a client of, of Wellfront and have my money invested and transfer stuff and set up a budget, and you know, like that's lightning fast compared to what I would say even what's her heralded as maybe some of the best client experience technology in the traditional wealth management space, right? So practically speaking, I think you yeah. can do things like make a list of companies or technology that you believe delivers a, a very future-oriented client experience and make it your benchmark and constantly be closing the gap, right? Take things that you've done for years successfully, like winning clients in a one-to-one -one in-person meeting and ask yourself, what do I have to do differently to do this in a digital world, right? And then the, the highest level of just being conscientious about it, I think that's the, you know, that's valuable too, but bringing it down to practical action steps is where I would, I would take that. So long answer to your question, but. Those are very, very practical. I've copied them both down. And again, I'm going back to listen to this again, because um, this is just really yeah, I great hope, stuff. I hope your uh, listeners you. find it um, um, to be valuable. These are, these are all questions and topics that I wish somebody would have helped maybe hand me in, in a big chunk. Uh, a lot of them are just learned over time and then starting our own RIA and kind of being, you know, well, not kind of, but definitely being future oriented and thinking about this. You know, these are just things that we're working through right now, right? So. Yeah, I have a, uh, a shameless plug for myself when it comes to the virtual meetings and creating trust, whether virtual yeah. or in person. Um, it, so in 2020, when uh, everybody went virtual, we we did revamp the I think a lot of people had to revamp the style of how you communicated and the process of types of meetings you had and the questions that you asked. Actually, a lot of the questions <laughs> came from you. I think I watched a, a video from That's you. That's how we met, way, right? I think you, you watched uh, a video a while of ago. a training I well, had done and they posted it online. Yeah. yeah. I think that's right. Yeah. So adding some of those, pretty much our, uh, it's, we call it, it's just our, our regular uh, sales process or whatever you want to call it. It's two meetings and it's the intro call and then it's the, uh, we're delivering a simplified one-page plan, sometimes an income plan. Everyone that's coming to us is retirement focused. Um, but there are certain things that we were able to do to to increase the value, uh, or at least the perceived value of the advice and the, the future of, of um, the plan for our clients. So if you're interested in that, check out the link below for the advisor value formula. <laughs> so there's, there's my plug. But really, advisors are finding a lot of success um, kind of using that and then modeling it their own own way, adding their own um, language to it, and uh, it's, it's making sense. And I think you've got um, something, do you have something very similar uh, like that for clients uh, or for advisors where they can get an idea of uh, the virtual process that you take people through? Or was that, yeah, I think, no, the wrong I, thing here? We have something like that, and it's on our, you know, top priority list to get some of these things published because some of the training that I've done has been for other industry groups or as a requested speaker, and 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 even as we're starting to grow LifeWorks, and then it makes its way onto Facebook, and people like you watch it, and then I have people say, hey, you should be publishing this stuff, and I'm like, oh yes, I should. Um, so yeah, we have some stuff that's coming. I mean, on our, on our website, lifeworksadvisors.com. In the footer, there's a section that says for advisors. We talk about the platform that we're building for advisors and, and some of those things. But you can also go uh, to YouTube and look up the future of advice. Um, that's our uh, our podcast channel. Season one was last year. I spent uh, a lot of time interviewing some of what I consider to be the best and the brightest leaders in the industry with one question. What does the future of wealth management look like in five years and in 10 years? 
and they're long form videos. So I think the average might be an hour and a half long, but they're with people that are running large RAAs that are doing very non-traditional stuff. They're with people in the tech space. Season two will kick off this fall. Um, so I would say that that would be a spot um, that I would encourage people to go and, and watch. My purpose for doing that was to help people start to, to help advisors specifically really focus in on this question and to try and raise the narrative around it and get it outside of just things like, you know, a digital client experience or things we hear of when we go to industry conferences, but then they're not defined. The way I thought about tackling it was, let's just go ask people that are already yeah. doing amazing things in our space and just absolutely not going to cover off the ball. And I'll ask some questions and then sit and listen, kind of like what you've done with me. So there's some great videos out there on the Future of Advice uh, podcast series. They can also get there through our website. And then in the coming weeks and months, we plan to start publishing some of the tools that we built to help our advisors and our firm here win, and then some of the training that I've done for other organizations in this space as well. So, gotcha. So that's also on yes. Spotify yep. podcasts. Any type of pod, you can listen to it while driving. Yep. You don't have to do YouTube. Okay, um, good. I'll, I'll link to that below as well. That's another practical piece of uh, uh, you know a place to go, so we don't get left behind when we're thinking about that last uh, question. You know that that you had mentioned. So that's super helpful.